children used to all come here together. Miri, Moore, their friends, for the Seabury Jam, the Scarecrows, and the rides. And then the exodus happened. fills her nostrils, or is it a scent lingering in her memories? estate. He should be inside, with the windows shut and doors locked. Moore's heart skips a beat. Either the fungus got to him, or he is somewhere out there, fiddling with the purifiers himself. wore them, the lingering memories of people, in one way or another, now gone. decorate a tourist attraction. It's authentic, her uncle would say, but he'd always dodge the question of whether the bones were from a whale or another large creature. Moore's uncle owned this place. He still somehow does. One ride was two coins. 
back when money still meant something. for a spark. Take a deep breath. The air still tastes foul, but the acrid poison is mostly gone. Two more to go.
He didn't want kids sneaking around, breaking things, or adults stealing things. But more was always welcome here. More was family. the heat on her tongue and fingers as she snuck a taste of the steaming sweet sour jam for weeks after she'd carry a little teaspoon so she wouldn't have to wash her hands she saw the farmer singing a song as he lit a candle by this tree she didn't understand what he meant until later that things are only gone when they are forgotten hey. the old man and his locks protecting his property as if a crowd might wander once again. Moore takes in the sour scents of the fermented berries, deeply curious to know their taste. excitedly showing everyone who would humor her the sounds and rhythms of the machine underneath the land. Her uncle always stayed the longest, watching her face light up the little dark holes inside. <gasps> the 
the old wood groans, dreaming of past revolutions, resolute to be a solution once more before turning to dust. The berry farmer sighs, exhausted from his struggle. Living things are his purview, not machines. So for all his troubles, all his striving to fix the machine, it simply bore no fruit. More frowns. Her frustration growing. She warned him not to toy with the machines. Moore's uncle huffs, disappointed at his niece's rudeness. For heaven's sake, was I meant to just watch as the poisonous dust slowly settled around my island? He was meant to stay inside and wait for her to be done. His heroics were simply unneeded. over her uncle at the sight of her success. Feeling thankful and a little ashamed, he offers some seaberry wine as reconciliation. He hands over his key, a sign of his trust, and asks her to fetch them a bottle of his finest, the one tucked away in the shed. Maybe she is being too harsh on her uncle. He is only trying to help, after all. Moore considers the bottle in her hands and spending a small moment with the farmer. But too many lives are in danger. Too many things are at stake. 
The glass will simply have to wait. to keep little trinkets in this hole until the day she reached a little too far. Her uncle always laughs as he retells the story of the proudest fish he caught, the mole. Rotten wood creaks in hunger, seeking, ready to devour. Thank <laughs> you. 